Player Two has entered the podcast. Welcome, welcome back to Player Two has entered the podcast. I am your co-host, Michael Peterson, a.k.a. MC Paper Stacks. And with me, as always, is my co-host with the co-most. Derek Merkison, a.k.a. Full Metal Merc. And we're back again for another week and another episode, baby. And another lot of stuff going on this week. Holy crap, a what a week, dude. Yeah. I, I don't think there is a week this emotionally up and down for me since the beginning of the year. Seriously. Yeah. It's been crazy. I want to kind of get some of the heavier stuff out of the way up front, and then we can just catch up, and then we can talk about some of the cool shit we saw this week. What do you think? Sounds good. All right, let's get into it then. (sighs) So, you probably already heard the news about the Atlanta shooting. I think they're penning it as the deadliest shooting since the beginning of the pandemic. Do you recall? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that young man went into several massage parlors and gunned down several people. At one point, witnesses heard him yelling that he was going to kill all the Asians, and most of the people he killed were Asians and or women. Mm-hmm. It's pretty fucking gross, and um, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff going on about this story that I think a lot of people are sadly familiar with, but what are your thoughts? I mean, it's sad all around. It sucks. Like you said, it's it's something that, especially being a black man, I ex- experience far too often. Mm-hmm. So it's just kind of like oof, some more uh, murder and death stuff. Speaking also. of that, this young man, of course, was arrested without incident. Uh, of course. He was, he was handled with care. Mm-hmm. And the police seem to be doing a lot of PR and pulling a lot of weight for him in their press conference, saying that he had a bad day and this was the result. He had uh, a bad day. <laughs> pretty much. Right. No aspersions to his character and, and any of that in a negative light from the police. Of course, the guy doing the press conference, it later came out that he had a lot of racist and anti-Asian posts on his Facebook. Oh, so, wow. of course, the police. And the thing mm-hmm. is, a lot of people are mad that he wasn't mistreated. I'm more mad that the cops can't treat other people the way they treat him. You know right. what I mean? Like, I don't mm-hmm. think they should come out and do PR, do the defense's job for somebody that they apprehend. But if they can apprehend this guy without incident and not kill him, then why is it when you're selling loose cigarettes, they got to murder your ass or you're sleeping right. in your bed or whatever, right? Or you're just kind of chilling. Just exactly. Around. Yep. Exactly. Or maybe you had a, a counterfeit $20 bill. Why do you have to be fucking murdered in the street? But this asshole with an automatic weapon gets to go around and shoot people and kill them completely end their lives talk about a bad day Mm -hmm. and the cops are like hey do you want to stop bird king on the way (laughs) you know what i mean Mm -hmm. there's that and a lot of the stuff he was talking sounded very incel to me so for those who are interested in what incels are what they're about where they came from why they are the way that they are there's a really good video by natalie Wynn, also known as contra points on youtube called incels i would suggest checking it out But essentially, one of the things that they believe and one of the things that makes them so angry is they believe that sexual attraction is a torture inflicted upon them by women. Mm. They refer to women as femoids, um, not even human. A lot of them feel like they have the right to have a woman or a girlfriend or to have sex and it's being denied from them unjustly. And they don't really look inward for that. And when they do, they just it's a lot of self-hatred. And I feel like that this is the extreme end result of that type of mindset. And you can tell by the way he was speaking that he's probably of that community. Okay. So I don't- yeah. So I jokingly made that observation. I was like, they probably weren't trying to do anything for him you know, sexually. And here you are telling me that that's most likely the case. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. (laughs) I think he visited those places and probably, I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to, again, I haven't heard accusations of whether or not these massage parlors were doing anything, you know, below or above board, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I think, again, this is not the part of the story I was looking into because who cares whether or not he actually had sex there or not. Right. His mindset around the justification that he has a sexual addiction and this is the way that he was trying to remove the temptation. Fuck off. (laughs) You know what I mean? But no, there's a lot of statements surrounding his motives and a lot of eyewitness testimony to allude to the fact that he is of an incel mindset. Whether or not he sees himself as a member of the community, I haven't heard yet or not. But again, it bears understanding at least so that if you have young men in your life that you know that could be either persuaded by incel logic or are already, you know, deep in that lifestyle, it's worth understanding where they come from and the kind of help that they may need to try to get out of it, you know, mm-hmm. because it is an affliction. Now, again, I'm not trying 
to humanize him in an attempt to absolve him of what he did, because this is good faith. This isn't bad faith. He's a white man. I'm trying to protect him like the <laughs> cops are. I want everybody to be treated as a human being like this guy was. And it pisses me off that we don't try to humanize victims of crimes if they're of color or minorities. Right. Right. And the thing is, there's a lot of people out there that are very frustrated and they, they get taken on by online groups and stuff like that. And I think incels, they're, they're churning out mass shooters faster than anybody else. So oh, yeah. it's a thing that people should be looking at. So anyways, our hearts go out to the victims. Our hearts go out to yeah. people in the Asian community. We stand with you. I'm not going to, I've seen a lot of people go, oh, Asians are racist too, blah, 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 blah. Everybody's racist, okay? Let's just get it off the table. Everybody's racist to a point, but not everybody's getting fucking shot for it, okay? Mm -hmm. Except black people. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, I see the argument a a lot from white people and actually black people this week, to be honest. And we need to stop. I don't care what the group is about or, or how you feel about them. No one deserves to be killed or held down or persecuted for right. their race, their creed, their gender, sexual preference, whatever, whatever. So, I mean, exactly. that should be fucking standard. Let's stop the whataboutism and just, can we have some solidarity, please? Can we say that this is wrong without having a, 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 a who who deserves what type With, of discussion? Yeah, yeah, and a but, you know? dot, dot, dot. Yeah, yeah, no buts. Thank you. And that's the big, beautiful booties. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, yeah. I, I, want, I want those. I like the big <laughs> booties, everybody. Like big I, and I can't be, and I cannot lie. Anyways. But yes, our hearts go out. Our hearts go out. (laughs) Wow. So fucking stupid. We are 14. Okay. Anyways, the other heavy topic I want to talk about is cancel culture. Mm. Friends of the show, call it like I don't see a podcast. If you haven't listened to them, you should. They're great guys. Their most recent episode, they touched on it a little bit. And it was in regards to the quote unquote cancellation of Pepe Le Pew. I guess Space Jam's not going to have him in there because his character as it is known, is the guy that kind of doesn't take no for an answer, so to speak. Right. And they were taking more of a lighthearted approach to it. I don't 100% agree, but let me ask you. I mean, what what are your thoughts on Dr. Seuss, Mr. Potato Head, fictional characters that, you know, may be problematic that are getting uh, removed or not being continued with by their IP holders? I mean, honestly, like I said, it's up to the IP holder for one. For two, when you have a character like Pepe Le Pew, who's literally like, basically trying to rape another let's just say person in this case just trying to rape someone Mm. with and advance on them sexually without their consent that's not something that needs to be in a children's cartoon and Mm. i've seen people bring up like family guy and quagmire so i was like well that's that's a cartoon for adults like your Mm -hmm. children should not be watching that right so when you have something on that's showing this behavior it normalizes it and a child can take that to mean oh especially a young boy who's already like on top of the world when it comes to children of his age that are girls. It's Mm -hmm. just like, Oh, well, Pepe Le Pew is grabbing all on this girl and he's, he kiss on her, even though she's saying, no, it doesn't matter. Cause I mean, he's a dude, so it it shouldn't, there's no consequences for that. Right. So I should be able to do that too. Right. Mm -hmm. Like that, that makes sense to me. So to take a character that for decades has been very rapey. Yeah. Extremely rapey. out of a out of a children's movie it's fine with me it's absolutely fine don't care yeah do not care and i think there's a larger discussion to be had about cancel culture because a lot of people are are bucking against it and pointing at non-legitimate and legitimate examples in my opinion mm-hmm. and it's always been around it's the way that we advance as a culture like it used to be acceptable for everybody in movies and tv to smoke like fucking chimneys right mm-hmm. and that got canceled ergo less people started smoking at a young age. It actually had an effect. Minstrel shows, uh, fucking blackface, all that shit used to be common. It's not. There's a a positive effect to that, you know, the less dehumanizing of people of color. Like, there are reasons to cancel things. I mean, I was even going back and watching a show that I fucking love, uh, Hackers. I've Mm -hmm. talked about Hackers on the show a few times, right? Yeah. There is a part in the in in the end of Hackers where they're setting up for the the big ultimate hack uh, against the bad hacker, right? They're going to set up to rig like stoplights to stop the police from trying to catch them when they go to do the hack. And Matthew Lillard's character, serial killer, as in Fruit Loops, (laughs) Mm -hmm. he has to go and actually rig in an office. What they show is a, a woman, a blonde woman sitting at her desk. 
and she backs out and Matthew Lillard's down there in between her legs, like setting something up. And you could tell he's like distraught and kind of like, Oh my God. She's like, did, did, did it check out? Okay. Is everything good down there? He's like, he, he, yeah, it's fine. And he walks away and his pants are half down oh. imitating that he had went down there and looked between her legs and, and masturbated. Oh my guys. That's sexual assault. Like that's right. the good guy. That was normal back in oh, the nineties. Wow. Like that's literally the fucking grossest thing ever. Imagine you're a loved one of yours having that done to them. Some or cre- just creepy, you. pervy Imagine guy. Imagine you. Yeah. You want somebody looking at your sack and touching themselves? Maybe you do. Although I don't think although I don't <laughs> think uh women would have an <laughs> issue with that being wrong. Of course they know it's wrong. Yeah. It's men men that are a problem. Men yeah. suck. We suck. Uh, we're sorry. sometimes. We're I, I remember what it was like to be young, single, and thirsty, especially within that culture, and done some things I definitely regret and that I should mm-hmm. be canceled for. <laughs> but I apologize. And that's the thing I really want to bring this around to. Whether you call it cancel culture or whatever it's called, you know, the progression of society, whatever you want to call it, because nowadays it's like this big encompassing thing. Mm-hmm. There are times where I feel like it's undeserved. I've already brought up James Gunn as an example, but there was an example this week. A, a journalist by the name of Alexi McCammond, mm-hmm. she was set up to be the incoming editor in chief at Teen Vogue, and she was forced out of her position due to old tweets that resurfaced. Now, these tweets already resurfaced in 2019, and she has since apologized for them. They were back in 2011 when she was a teenager, and they could be considered racist or anti-Asian, right? Mm -hmm. And she has strove since then. She's apologized. She strove since then to advance the work of of people of color. Like, she's made several statements about it. Amidst all of, you know, what's been going on with the Atlanta shooting this week, Ultra Beauty learned of these tweets, and that's one of the people that buy ad space in Teen Vogue, and they pulled their ad revenue as a way to pressure Teen Vogue into firing Alexi and Alexi did bow out of the position. Hmm. I think that's wrong. That's where I disagree personally with cancel culture. If we don't allow people to grow and learn as people, if we can't bring people over to our side, if we're always going to, you know, hold them up to a standard, especially, I mean, I, I mean, this is 10 years ago, but if you have done something wrong, you've learned from it and you've apologized and you have since exemplified behavior that shows that you actually learn from that issue or that mistake. What the hell? What's the point even? Are we just doing it out of spite at this point? You know what I mean? Right. I feel like Teen Vogue should have went to bat for her, and I think that they were cowards at not doing so, and I think that everybody involved is wrong in this instance. James Gunn is a happy story because he was let go and then rehired, you know, amidst, like, the backlash about it being a bad faith digging up of old tweets that he has since apologized for Mm -hmm. and again it's not like they dug them up and then and they were all they were still up and then she apologized she had deleted them she had already addressed them already apologized all of this had been laid to bed but then brought back up again yeah i mean same thing happened to kevin hart Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like there are people out there who especially in comedy comedy is always pushing the envelope and you're always on the edge of what's acceptable in culture and there are a lot of comedians that have apologized for past jokes. Sarah Silverman, I mean, went on the other day, I think, apologizing about something she said about Paris Hilton. And mm. Paris Hilton was a fun punching bag for a lot of people. For you oh, know, yeah. But then to be reminded that, you know, she's a human being, you know what I mean? And be like, hey, some of the shit I said was pretty vicious and personal. I'm sorry. Yeah. So those are my thoughts. And uh, again, whether you agree or disagree I think if you're having this conversation in good faith, I think it's good. I think we all should be looking at it and discussing it. But at the end of the day, personally, I'm for advancing the culture in a positive way. And that means accountability. But accountability doesn't mean holding something against somebody when they've already apologized and grown from it. You know what I mean? So, right. from it. So. Okay. Last politically thing I want to bring up real quick because I just think it's funny. Another one. Another one. Weed, marijuana, mm. sticky, the devil's icky, icky. lettuce. That's right, the devil's arugula. Mary Jane, <laughs> Colombian gold mine, grass, hash, the weed, dig it. <laughs> it's <laughs> recreationally, it's legal in Washington D.C. I don't know if you knew that or not. Mm. And several places around this great nation of ours, including where a lot of Biden's staffers came from. Biden's young staffers, many of his young staffers, were asked if they had used marijuana, told to them, hey, this isn't going to be held against you against your job or anything. Apparently that was a lie. Right. Because a ton of his staffers were actually let go (laughs) recently for marijuana use. 
And my only question is, are you going to fire Kamala Harris too or nah? Because she smoked weed and also supports legalization. But apparently Biden's about that reefer madness. So I don't know. <laughs> reefer madness. <laughs> <laughs> well, she got a, a button we could press. Reefer madness. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm looking at libs this week. Like, this is your guy. Okay. It's your boy. <laughs> it's my boy. That's and he boy. still owes me money, by the way. And. You oh, know, he, keep, you haven't I, got paid? Yeah, I, I keep telling my friends and family, I'm like, if you see him in the street, tell him I want my money. Yeah, I, you know, <laughs> coincidentally, I got my STEMI on St. Patrick's Day, which must be the luck of the IRS. Right, <laughs> the luck of the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bother. Oh, man. But hey, let's let's move off all this heavy stuff for a second. I think it must needs to be addressed but I want to catch up with you, man. How's your week been going? Going good, man. Vicky had a follow-up appointment for her ankle. The doctor said that she is able to put weight on her foot now so she can walk. That's good. And she's able to do a lot more stuff for herself, which is good on me and her as well. Because, you know, when you're, oh, man, when you're just, you're not able to do anything for yourself, you know, it does something to you mm-hmm. mentally. I feel you. I do. And to have to rely on other people. So I know she's feeling better about being able to do stuff for herself like i still want to help her and stuff but Mm -hmm. like she if you if you know vicky you know she she goes the extra mile she's like oh i can walk yeah Yeah. but not really though so i need you to chill out a little bit yeah you don't want any permanent damage happening (laughs) right she she just you know i love her so much she just does she's so extra and i love i love her yeah but uh um, yeah I'm, i'm a big fan of your wife she's a sweetheart you're a lucky guy yeah right on yeah, so I am happy about that. Another thing, I bought a new computer. Mm-hmm. She was tired of me using her new computer for <laughs> the podcast and when I need to print <laughs> stuff off for eBay. So I was like, yeah, fine, fuck it. Yeah, fine. I'll buy, I'll buy a new one. I'll buy one. She, she wanted me to buy a new MacBook, which is like thirteen hundred dollars. I was like, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All I'm gonna do is do eBay, Amazon youtube and podcast that's it i don't need to spend 1300 dollars on something so i went to disc replay and i spent like half that amount less than okay. half that amount so okay and got the same type of laptop we got a macbook cool, 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 cool. so yeah man so this week this week's been pretty good i've been working 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 on the railroad all week long i have had no time to play any games well speaking of games all. though you were mentioning to me that you added a new uh tool to the toolkit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I recently started refurbishing the original NES. I've done three of them so far. Basically, just the, you know, the 72 pin connectors on those things, they get worn out, bent down, dirty, dusty. So I open up the Nintendo, pull the pins up a little bit, boil the 72 pin connector, which I was surprised Mm. to find it actually works. I've switched out the old ones with new ones. Like, I'm pretty much becoming a pro at it. So I think I'm going to start making my way up through the generation. So next I'll do a Super Nintendo. Uh-oh. And try to fix that. And then, you know, I got a, a few Sega like Dreamcast. I got some GameCubes. I got a lot of stuff that's broken and doesn't work that I can probably easily fix myself. So yeah. I'm excited to go on this little refurb journey. Cool. Yeah. Well, I got experience refurbing Fatboy PS2s because those notoriously broke down. Mm-hmm. So just to give you a little bit of comfort, when you get to PS2, shouldn't be that hard. I was able to do it back when I was like in my late teens using, Sweet. you know, old YouTube. I was able to figure it out. Mm. So old YouTube. you should be fine. Yikes. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Good news. Well, we had a couple of big pop culture things come up this week. And then I, sp- I promise you we will get to video games. We're 20 minutes in, no video games. <laughs> But We're my video games. We saw something that was kind of like a video game, a four-hour mm-hmm. video game called the Justice League Zack Snyder Cut. Ooh. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what I, what'd you think? <laughs> okay, so I already know your thoughts on it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I actually really enjoyed it, man. Like, yeah. don't get me wrong, it's not the best movie ever made. I see everybody on YouTube and stuff sucking Dax Snyder's dick like, oh, it's the greatest thing ever. Oh my God. It's really not. It's Mm. just, it's a better version than what we got. And since you haven't seen the original, you don't have the context of that. I don't. I have not seen the original. Terrible version. Yeah. So me having context watching this, like, wow, everything makes so much more sense. The movie flows so much better, even though it's four hours. It didn't feel like it. I sat and watched the entire four hours, like, nonstop. I'll say some other stuff when you talk about your perspective, but, yeah, I I really really enjoyed it, man. 
Well, yeah, I, I, yeah, you're right. I didn't like it. It wasn't the worst movie ever, and there were some good parts. So I can talk about what I liked, and then maybe get into what I didn't like. Okay. I really liked uh, the last hour of the film, minus the epilogue. Um, yeah. I thought the action scenes where, you know, the penultimate scene where the Justice League all gets together was really dope. Mm -hmm. That scene where they all kind of like line up around Batman in the Batmobile or whatever was fucking super cool. Yeah. I, a lot of the stuff where they were like working together and all the teamwork was neat. I thought Steppenwolf's design, like his like living armor was kind of neat. Yeah, so, so much cooler than the original. Yeah. You see the original? I've seen pictures of the original Steppenwolf, and he, he looks like some looks whack like ass a cosplay, geriatric yeah. old man. Yeah. <laughs> so, although this Steppenwolf kind of has almost like a, I want, I want to say a cute face, but he's got like a sunken yeah. uh-huh. underbite. Like he looks kind of sad. Like yeah, and he, he looks is like sad. an old lady from the south. And his little tiny, his little tiny face. <laughs> yeah, and spoilers for uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League, just in case we get into that a little bit. Um, yeah, because we uh, might. But I mean, it's an old movie. Who who doesn't know how it? Goes? No, but there's so much new stuff. Oh, that's like fair. you. That's you don't fair. understand. <laughs> there's so much new stuff. The plot is almost completely different. Yeah. Well, of course, we'll have timestamps in the description. So if we get into spoilers, or if you're concerned, we might get into spoilers. You can shoot ahead. No worries. So, yeah. I call him Stephen Stephen Puppy. Stephen <laughs> Puppy. puppy. Stephen Baby. Uh, trying to think of what else I liked. Um, <laughs> Wonder Woman's theme music is badass. <laughs> still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, so good. yeah i don't know yeah they, they definitely upped her power she's kind of flash like now too i was like okay mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> when they did that i was like this is cool but it looks weird because like you said they sped up the frames yeah or sped up the shots which I, yeah I on, on some of them they slow like because he definitely loves so slow-mo so there's some slow-mo oh my God. but there's also some stuff where they just sped her footage up to make her look faster and i'm like all right this is a little benny hill but okay tell the truth right <laughs> this is the and I like how like expo, like man this movie loves exposition the first guy she grabs a lasso she's like hey listen this lasso Compels makes you, you tell, tell the, the truth. truth now answer this question and you gotta answer it <laughs> truthfully because this lasso is the lasso of Hephaestia whatever the then it'll Hephaestia. make you and it'll make you tell the truth that I mentioned that because I need to <laughs> because the audience doesn't know and apparently and- and you obviously don't know because you're not answering my fucking question. <laughs> Literally, like if you if you get hit with the lasso of truth, and she asks you a question, you're supposed to just answer it. Yeah. This dude's going on this long ass explanation, not answering the question. I'm like, dude, answer yeah. the question. The lasso of truth compels you. Yeah. The power of Christ compels you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really like that scene. I thought it was it was very Zack Snyder because there's like one human man with a gun. She's in front of a bunch of hostages, and instead of rushing him down, she does her little bracelet clap <laughs> mm-hmm. and, like, destroys all the glass and stone out of this building. It probably obliterates this man, and all of the, the chunks of the building come flying out at the police, probably concusses a few. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, uh, all right, cool. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of people have issues with how characters were taking down other characters but i was just like i don't care just take them down and make it look cool like it doesn't have to make sense anymore just yeah no no, obviously if you go in trying to like have this make sense then you're going in for the wrong reason go in to watch a cool ps2 cutscene because that's pretty much what you're going to (laughs) get obviously it's going to look a lot nicer right but uh the aspect ratio threw me off i heard the justification that it was made so it could be shown in imax but it's not it's on hbo so just give me the widescreen damn it Right. Anyways, <laughs> so that was weird. But uh, I, I guess I can get into what I didn't like then because we're already starting to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, far too much slow motion. Yeah. Far too much. Could have been three hours. It could. Yeah. It, it maybe even less than that. The thing about slow motion or you know action set pieces is they're supposed to highlight something important or something awesome. But if you do it to everything, then nothing is awesome. You know, like mm-hmm. it's just not. <sighs> Like uh, my man Syndrome in Incredible said it best, when everyone's super, no one is. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. True. <laughs> <laughs> little little uh, Incredibles reference. I love yeah. it. 
Yeah, that's way back. But no, it, it and then a lot of like a, again, there was a lot of really bloated like I'm feeling a certain type of way. Let me play. Let me go slow mo in a sad song. Like mm-hmm. Lois Lane goes to bring coffee out to like not Superman's grave, which would make more sense to me, but the place right. where his statue used to be was broken. She goes out yeah. there to stand and the in the rain. Broken off of there. Yeah, they nobody cleaned it up. Let's and not fix that. So she's out there doing that, and then the the introduction to the Flash I didn't like. Yeah, because this very, woman's car uh, goes flying after creepy. going like ten miles an hour, and yeah, they linger on her really long. There's a hot dog near her face. I'm like, what is happening? And he's like, he's like putting his fingers through her hair. It's like, dude, if you don't just save her, yeah, you don't need to caress her in slow motion. Just he's save like, her. Ooh, black woman. Hey, baby. <laughs> like, I mean, she's a cutie to be sure, but right, I just didn't really right. see the point in it. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. are you lonely? Is that a part of your character? Are you a hopeless romantic? It's never brought up again. Nope. <laughs> so. I did like Barry in this after that scene. Like, I, I his whole thing with his dad, I thought was kind of heartfelt. I mean, he was key, I think, in the end to, oh, yeah. you know, making sure that they succeed. Him and Cyborg. Cyborg's arc, I felt like it was a little forced. It didn't get enough time. He was just like, fuck the world. Oh, you still didn't world, think it didn't get enough world. time? No, I didn't. I didn't. Well, I mean, in, well, like, in the original, like, he has literally no backstory, almost. Like, zero. I felt like he got some of the most expounded upon stuff like no no definitely i think he's the most fleshed out character it's just that he turns on a dime as far as like his yeah. growth mm-hmm. like he he's he's still like angry said, the world. and stoic <laughs> before he goes into the mother boxes and as soon as he's in there he's like i'm not broken and i'm like but you literally but just you, said you, you were, were what changed between on. now and then you yeah. are broke on <laughs> yeah so i think that his his movie could have been amazing if they actually gave him one. Yeah, I think there's a lot of emotion in it. fixed his CG. Yeah. He just doesn't look good all the time. No. There, there's a lot of little CG issues in here that, again, could be studio. Could be Zach not getting the money he needs to kind of do that once over. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of stuff where people are, like, on a car or something. There's obvious green screen. And it's just like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? Aquaman, he has not one, but two scenes where he removes his shirt and mm-hmm. goes off into the ocean. It really oh, yeah. slowly. And I know that's for the ladies and everything, but Aquaman, why even fucking wear a shirt? Like what right. do you get? Do you come up from the ocean and find a shirt and put it on and then just rip it back off again? Yeah, just don't wear I can't a shirt, imagine man. you're gonna catch a cold. Ever. Yeah. Clearly. You live in the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. And then the, the the whole epilogue where that could have just been cut out. But it, again, I guess it, this is for fans. So if you're a fan, you're going to love all this extra stuff. They have the bad future of Batman's hanging out with like Deathstroke and teamed up with him. And that one chick from Atlantis, I don't know her name, uh, Aquaman's Mira. love interest. What's her name? Mm-hmm. Mira. Mira? Okay. Yeah. Cyborg is still around. It, they allude to the fact that Aquaman is dead and Joker and... Batman get into this dick measuring contest about who can cause each other the most grief or whatever. <laughs> it was awkward. It was like yeah. two two high schoolers like, ooh, I'm darker than you. No, I am. I'm darker than you. I'm I can fucking kill you. I, I can swear. Say, I can say fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's rated R, so they say fuck more than once. So that's yeah, they cool, say like three times. It's pretty, yeah, yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. And the, the violence is up just a little bit. You know, yeah, there's blood, blood here and there. Cool. Yeah. Superman's done. When he comes in at the end, is so much cooler. Oh, yeah. When he comes in and, like, Steppenwolf is swinging that axe and it, like, hits his shoulder and he's, like, not impressed. I'm not impressed. <laughs> that was cool. But my, the funny thing about that is, well, you haven't heard anything about him, so you didn't have any pre- preconceived notion. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, well, man. Mean, you know, um, Alfred probably gave him the lowdown. Yeah. yeah. When we were watching it, I was like, baby, you know that scar, right? Jeremy Irons plays Alfred. Yeah. She's like, really? Oh. Be prepared for the cool. I was like, yeah, you can hear it in his voice. <laughs> Be prepared for sensational news. Uh, is it we can further? do the whole song. I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Last thing I want to say about the movie is they got my boy, Martian Manhunter, yeah. in it. And when I saw him, you can ask Vicky, I like squealed and was just yelling and screaming like, Martian Manhunter in his bitch! Martian Manhunter! Yeah. <laughs> it was, like, he didn't look amazing, but he was there. And that's all I cared yeah, about. Yeah, I felt like he was there more as a proof of concept. Like, look what we could do with this guy. Because he didn't really have yeah. anything to do. He showed up to pretend to be Clark's mother for whatever yeah. reason. Because it doesn't make late. sense for him not to be involved in what's happening. It, yeah. It does not. I, yeah, it... Okay, Marvin the Martian yeah. showed up. Cool. 
Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> And it was yeah, glorious. so, I mean, overall, I think if you are not feeling the DC Extended Universe and the only DC movies that you liked were maybe like the first Wonder Woman or Shazam, I don't think this is going to turn you around. However, if you're a huge DC fan and you like all the movies despite their flaws or you're a fan of Zack Snyder and you love slow-mo, I'd say go for it because I think that you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Like I said, there were there were a few parts I liked, which made me sad because I wanted a better movie wrapped around those parts, and I didn't get it. Right. But I feel like it wasted a lot of my time. The whole time I was doing, I'm watching, and I was like, I'd just rather be playing Dying Light right now. So yeah, that was Justice League. The other superhero thing that came out this week, Falky and Winnie. Yeah, Falky and Winnie. That's right. DC Falcon. sure could learn a thing or two. From Falcon and Winter Soldier, because let me tell you, that first episode, me likey. Yeah, I'm all in. I was already all in, but I am super all in, man. No, I I was a little concerned. I wasn't sure if I would like immediately latch to their characters, because they're so overshadowed by the giants that they work alongside, you mm-hmm. know? But yeah. Falcon was great. I really liked... They opened up with a really awesome action scene, where he's being contracted by the military to save a hostage of some sort and they're like up against a deadline because if they get to this border he can no longer like proceed to save him which i was like is he gonna stop though i mean come on superheroes don't stop right <laughs> they don't stop <laughs> um stop. but it, it showcased a lot of his mastery of not only the wings but the versatility of what they can be used for you know as a shield he's still got red wing is it called yeah going out there and helping them out got that advanced ai working like red wing take care of things for me and then it just knows what you mean. Right. <laughs> so it was really cool. And then you get to see post blip stuff. Obviously, he was one of the people that was blipped. Pretty much everybody in his family, but his sister and her kids. Mm-hmm. And they got this family boat. And they got this business he's trying to get a loan on. And nobody will give him a loan. Which I'm like, don't you have Pepper Potts' cell phone number? She's got to own at least like six banks. What the my hell, whole man? thing. My whole thing about this was like, damn, black man still can't get a loan. Right? <laughs> Safe. I mean, I like, every fucking superhero. Let me tell you something, man. Every single person that fought in that battle against Thanos, every single person should be taken care of for life. They saved the right. motherfucking universe. Talking about can't get a loan. Right. I couldn't Not believe to it. mention, you work for the fucking military. Right. I don't know, man. You get he should just He should just be get Right. He should just be getting paid and that be it. Like, I, I get what they're trying to say. And I love that they're telling a human story because I think, it, you know, this, this adds some drama or whatever. But I feel like they could have written it in a little better because either he doesn't know all of his options or he's too proud to reach out to the powerful people that he knows for help. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? He's like, like no, nah, we're going to get this loan, baby. By ourselves. Nobody's going to help us. <laughs> you know what Psych. I mean? Like, I mean, the residuals that, like, I mean, the Hulk probably gets from his inventions alone. Like, everybody he knows is stupid rich. <laughs> I don't right. get it. But, okay, fine. And then you get to Winter Soldier, and he's in therapy. You Which know, he they, desperately needed. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's having flashbacks to, like, when he was old Winter Soldier and killing not only his targets, but innocent people. And one of the innocent people that he killed, it's revealed that he's hanging out with that guy's father and just yeah. befriending him. And and it's just, it, man. That's yeah, heavy. <laughs> it was like, heavy. Oh. And I figured I, it out, like, earlier. But oh, yeah, like, oh, immediately. No. As soon as he talked about his dead son, I was like, shit, he killed that guy, didn't he? Right. <laughs> I was like, No. <laughs> I mean, and in case you didn't get it, they they literally show a picture of the kid in the in the old guy's apartment just just to kind of bring it home. Uh, there was action, there was drama. You got a good setup for both the characters, and then that ending though. Oh, oh. that ending! <laughs> I loved. So in the very beginning, you know, Falcon kind of already said, "I don't feel like the shield belongs to me." He gives it to the Smithsonian so it can be preserved, right? And then some dude is like, "You did the right thing, son. Bring that shield back." Yeah. It's like, shut, shut the fuck up. Who are you? <laughs> yeah, that was a little lame. And then mm-hmm. at the end of the episode, they unveil that they have a new Captain America. And this dude comes out and his face, even under the mask, I'm like, this cracker ass cracker. Derpy <laughs> ass. <laughs> right? Yeah. This opie looking motherfucker. <laughs> like, even Man. my wife was like, ugh. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> so was Vicky. She was like, oh. They found the then most. She said, they, they took Chris Evans' fine ass out and brought this derpy looking. <laughs> well, the thing is, it, like, they show him from behind first, and I was like, that is not America's ass. <laughs> he was ain't. not filling out them pants at all. And then he like looks at the screen, and then Falcon's just looking down like, god damn it. Yeah, I know. And this is what inspired my name of the title for this episode. Yeah. Literally, in my uh, Dave Chappelle, Rick James voice. The new Captain America looks at the screen. Thanks for the shield, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I was saying that so much after that episode, just cranking up. <laughs> I was like, that's literally the name of this episode. It can't be anything else. Thanks for the shield. <laughs> Oh, that is so good. Uh, That's gold, man. I want to use that as our episode title, but I can't. <laughs> That's too much. Can you- <laughs> no, I can't get can't get past the censors on that one. But that's oh, good. Oh man. man, that's amazing. Oh, buy, <laughs> buy a new shield. You got right, money. right. Darkness. Man. You gotta get up. Get it. <laughs> shield. You got money. Darkness. Black motherfucker. <laughs> Get alone, motherfucker. That's not my Captain America. Not my captain. Buy a new boat. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. That's amazing. Ooh. Well, on that note. <laughs> yeah. Falcon I give, and Winnie. Give I it give a watch. The episode, yeah, an A+. Let's move on. We got a lot of shit to talk about. So yeah. let's get into what we've been playing this week. Now, you, you were really busy, so I will cover. I'll let you okay. know all the games I've been playing. I'm getting a little closer to you on Persona 5 Strikers, but not exactly caught up. I did finish the second jail. Okay. And... All those side questy things opened up. I got access to revisit previous jails. Yeah. So that's really cool. Still really enjoying the game. Not much new to say about Persona 5 Strikers, but ba-da-ba-ba-ba. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On Monday night, I played Spider-Man and Venom Maximum Carnage. Ooh. Yeah, with that Green Jelly soundtrack. That's the old SNES slash Genesis game that uh, came out from Acclaim. And mm-hmm. LJN, yeah. <laughs> but I liked it when I was a kid, and it's it's still cool now. It's just stupid hard. What was cool though is a prominent speedrunner of the game actually popped into my stream to say hi and give me a few tips, and he even followed me on Twitter and said, "Hey, you want to get together sometime? I could teach you how to speedrun it." I don't know if I actually want to speedrun the game, but uh, I'm down to reach out to the guy. I may possibly have him on the show sometime soon. So cool. I don't want to make any promises, but it'd be really neat to interview and hang out with a speedrunner for a bit, I think. Yeah. So look forward to that. I'll reach out to him and see if he's available for that. Friday Night Frights, more Resident Evil 4. Ashley found her, and she's back. We're hanging <laughs> out. She's about to get kidnapped again, though. I fought the Invisible mm. Bugs. They're really scary. I'm trying to think of other scary parts in the game that I'm... Like the monsters that really frightened me. I did that hedge maze of all the wolves, so the tentacles, those monsters frightened me. Yikes. I gotta say, my like, my top three scariest monsters, like regular monsters, not bosses, because there's a boss right. in the third act that terrifies me. But <laughs> the three like regular monsters that are scary to me are the invisible bugs, and then the wolves with the tentacles, and then of course the regenerators. And I haven't fought any of those yet. They don't they don't come to the third act. Oh, cool. But they they breathe like this. They go. <laughs> Yeah. Which I'm not sure if it's going to pick up after I do my After Effects on the recording. But basically, they, they're <laughs> very sharp, uh, raggedy intake of breath. And the, the Regenerator is because they have plagas on their body that you have to shoot, but you can't see unless you have infrared, which you can't have access to until at least after your first encounter. Mm. And they walk towards you really slowly, but if they get close enough, they leap at you and just lock onto your neck with their teeth, and they're mm. in the screen with like really wide eyes going, hing, 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 hing. and it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's not great. <laughs> Gnawing on your neck. So I'm going to play episode four this upcoming week. I'm still having a ton of fun with the game so i don't want to stop just yet speaking of zombies this is kind of an interesting story that gets me into a game that i played a ton this week so i was messing around with my main emulator and i was playing this kind of arcadey zombie game for dreamcast i can't remember the name of it some obscure game it wasn't and... house of the dead no 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 it wasn't house oh, okay. of the dead it, i think it was a japanese only title because i don't ah. it, it had english but you know like i don't know if it was actually 100 percent localized but anyways mm-hmm. My son was hanging out with me, and he goes, what are those? I'm like, oh, those are zombies. He goes, what are zombies? I'm like, oh, my God. 
you know, what I have failed. What aren't they? You know, like, right. they're in every video game. And I'm like, they're basically people that have died and come back to life and they want to eat your brain. So he goes, Oh wow. He goes, <laughs> well, why are they, why are that? Why is that zombie hitting the other zombie? Aren't they friends? I'm like, no, honey, monsters are not friends. Monsters are monsters. <laughs> like, and I was like, I have a ton of games of zombies. You know, I can show you another one. And I thought about like, which game would be cool to kind of showcase zombies. So you popped in dead space. I popped in Dying Light. <laughs> oh, no, because Dead Space isn't really zombies. Nah, and plus, no. Dead Space is way too much for him. Like he's he's actually pretty good when it comes to scary content. Like he doesn't get nightmares or get super scared because I don't react that way. And he's been seeing this stuff since he was young. But mm-hmm. we played Dying Light, and they're pretty aggressive, the zombies. But there's some slow shambly ones too. And you're doing all the parkour and the attacks and everything. Well, you've played Dying Light, right? Yeah, it's great. You get dropped in that fictional city and. You're running missions for, like, the two different factions and just run around trying to avoid zombies. They get super aggressive at night. You got those hunters you have to watch out for. And uh, we were having a ball, jump kicking zombies and throwing stuff at them and <laughs> setting them on fire. <laughs> and then he started drawing, like, zombified versions of all his favorite characters. He's like, this is Zombie Simon and this is Zombie Luigi. Mm. And he doesn't have any clothes. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, Luigi's <laughs> naked. He's naked. Yeah, he's been obsessed with drawing characters naked lately, which, I mean... Whatever, fine. Who who isn't? You know, who isn't? I still am. <laughs> so yeah, Dying Light continues to be an amazing game, and I actually got kind of addicted to it after I showed him. I just kept playing, and I'm like, oh my god, this game is so awesome. I'm having a lot of fun with it. What I really like about it is you gain power points whenever you attack zombies or inflict damage that go into like the skill tree for uh, attacking. And then, of course, you have a skill tree for athletics that makes your traversal easier and eventually get access to a grappling hook. And then you're Spider-Man all over the place. Nice. And then you have your survivor points for doing missions or surviving during the night if you decide to stay out instead of, like, you know, sleep it off. Again, access to a whole tree there. And then you got the legend skill tree, which I haven't unlocked yet. I think it's a late game thing. So there's just all this stuff you get to look forward to. They did a really good job of stringing along new abilities and experience so that way you really want to get into it and scavenge and, and kind of continue to play the game. They do a good job of that. So it makes me even more excited for the sequel, which I know it got delayed, but considering where they came from, from Dead Island to Dying Light to the expansions on Dying Light, now it's working on the sequel, I'm excited to see what they come up with. So Yeah, so I'm excited for you. Yeah. I played a little bit more of Remnant from the Ashes. It's starting to get a little more samey now that I've gotten mm. a little bit further into it. It's not bad. It's not bad. Okay. It's just... The enemy variety, there are different enemies, but the environments and the enemies aren't changing as often to keep me as interested. So I think that game would shine better under like the co-op where more people are playing together, possibly. Mm-hmm. But speaking of co-op, something that was announced in the Square Enix Presents, which we'll get into during gaming news, but I want to talk about this game now. There is a new game coming out called Outriders, and they dropped a demo the same day as the presentation. And... I didn't get a chance to catch the presentation until yesterday, last night, in fact, just after I stopped streaming. So it was like after midnight, I caught the presentation and they're like, Outriders. And they said that there's a demo. Now, Outriders, to kind of describe what it's about, it's like a co-op based shooter RPG with four different classes, thick skill trees. Mm. And you basically play it like Earth has been destroyed. There's colonies coming from Earth to this new planet that they think that they can not, I guess not terraform because it's already kind of ready, but mm-hmm. they land there and, and shit goes south real quick. And you end up being imbued with these special abilities that give you powers. Okay. So, for example, I picked a pyromancer class and I can shoot fire or set people on fire in addition mm-hmm. to like, you know, running and gunning. There's other ones where they can, like, warp space-time and kind of warp around a la Nightcrawler, I guess. You know, just different stuff like that. And the art design wasn't really speaking to me at first. You know, when I was watching the trailer, I I felt very kind of generic and try-hard. But they were like, from the people that brought you Gears of War and Bulletstorm. And I was like, huh, okay. (laughs) And and then when I played it, when I played the demo and got my hands on how it looks. And again, I'm playing on the PS5, so experiences may vary. But the world is crisp and beautiful. The animations are really good. When you have dialogue trees, a la like Mass Effect, where you can like talk to people, although it's not like 
pick the Paragon option or pick the Renegade option. It's more just casually talking and, and getting more information out of people if you want it. Right. But, uh, yeah, the way they animate and talk to each other, it's dynamic. The camera angles are interesting. The shooting feels really good. There's a cover system that's really good. You got the powers. The cooldowns are quick because the way that you heal in this game is by causing damage to enemies with your powers. Oh. It's a little different for every class, but for the Pyromancer, if you kill an enemy while they're marked by one of your abilities, like Ashen or they're on fire, then you get healed. Oh. So cool. it really rewards aggressive play. Okay. Which I'm into. You know me. I'm like, Leroy <laughs> Jenkins. And God they're like, yes, it, do that. Do that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I stayed up way too late last night playing it, which is why we got a late start on recording today. And I am sorry. That's all right. It is a video game podcast. And I do love me some video games as evidenced by my irresponsibility. Yay. <laughs> Yay, video <laughs> games. Look forward to more on that. The demo is out now, and the actual game is going to drop on April 1st, so, like, super okay. soon. And I'm like, I might get it. Like, I don't know. It. Ooh, hey. I kind of want it. You know what it's I mean? It's got in you, baby. The cool thing about the demo is any progress you make in the demo, and the demo is quite robust, it will lead into the main game. Oh. So my. you're not wasting your time on this demo. Definitely get it if you're at all interested in an RPG with skill trees and shooting it looks dope, and I can't wait to actually have some friends that play it so we can squad up, because this, this feels like Borderlands as far as like the level of co-op and looting, but better to me? I don't know. We'll see. I may be hyping it up too much just because I'm high off of my first encounter of it with it, but I had a lot of fun, and I was not expecting it. Dope. So. Yeah, so that's it for me this week for games, aside from... Duh, 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 my Pokemon Diamond Nuzlocke! Woo! I've been trying to earn one gym badge per week but this game threw so much at me in pursuit of my third gym badge that i didn't get it yet mm -hmm. but what i did do is you know i was on that cycling path last week and i went under the cycling path and found a cave called wayward cave filled to the brim with bronzong those uh steel psychic oh, types yeah mm -hmm. but of course i caught a zubat instead because that was the first thing that it showed up instead of the bronze song, which would I mean, I don't have any steel or psychic type, so that would have been nice. Anyways, I named the uh, Zubat Falky and uh, moved on. <laughs> <laughs> Wayward Cave is huge. Like, it's aptly named because it's just sprawling, and it really wore my Pokemon out. I had to use a lot of my healing items. I was worried I wasn't going to make it out. I did have an escape rope, so it wasn't a dire, dire situation. But at the very end of a cave, I ran into a lost girl. Her name is Mira, and she's like, hey... I don't know my way out of here. Can you help me? And I went ahead and helped her out of the cave. <laughs> and I said, nope, escape rope. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> but the cool thing is she had a Kadabra, and just like the woman I met in the forest, after every battle, she healed my Pokemon. So I was like, gotta grind them all, mm -hmm. <laughs> Pokemon. And I got all of my party up to at least level 20. So nice. that was good. And I helped her out of the cave. I ran into another cave off of Route 207, Mount Coronet, and I found a, another damn Geodude, and I just KO'd it. I'm like, I already have two. <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing with our lives, Geodude? So I went to Route 208, and I found a Metatite. I named him Gandhi. Okay. And <laughs> then I made it to Heart Home City, and the gym leader refused my challenge. She said, you ain't ready for this. Mm. And I was like, all right, I guess that's cool. And then... I saw a contest hall where they were doing Pokemon contests, and I actually ran into my mom there. And she was like, hey, you know, I have a life outside of you. I'm out here living it. And I'm like, oh, right. that's cool, I guess. And she's like, I'm looking you, forward to, yeah, do you. I'm looking forward to seeing you participate in these contests. And I looked around, and I was like, nah, I'm not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and then on my way out, I bumped into my rival, and he was like, let's fight. And I took him down pretty easily. <laughs> I was like, all is right. Is this one of those uh, asshole rivals, or is this like a friendly rival? Uh, it's a mix. He's friendly in that he isn't like constantly negging me, but also he's like, I want to be the very best. And he wants right. to kick my ass every time he sees me. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's a little bit of that going on, but no, he isn't near as snarky as some of the rivals in the past. And then, uh, at the edge of town, there's a guy hanging out by the exit and he had an egg and he handed it to me. So I took the egg with me. I figured, you know. Who knows what'll pop out of this? I can't Don't remember. Don't take eggs from strangers. <laughs> oh no! Unless you, unless it's in Pokemon, then totally do. <laughs> so now my party's down to five. I went ahead and put my Zubat out of my party so I could carry the egg around 
and went to Route 209, ran into a Mime Jr., which I named Penny. <laughs> then I ran across the Lost Tower, and I was like, ooh, ghost Pokemon. And I went in there looking to see if I could get a Ghastly, and of course, a Zubat popped out. God damn it. And I KO'd it, because again, I don't need more than two Zubats. And then, of course, then the Ghastly started to come out. Uh-huh. And uh, at the top, I got HM Strength, which I can't use because I need my third badge to use it. So I just hung on to it. And I, I arrived at uh, Silesian Town. I dropped my Shellos and my Mime Jr. at the daycare for some leveling while I'm away, because why not? Uh-huh. And I found some ruins. There's uh, Silesian ruins filled with Unknown. So I caught myself an Unknown. That's my first psychic Pokemon, I think. Found some items. Cool. Popped out of there, headed to Route 10. Found myself a Cricketune. It's like a oh. sing-songy bug type. Named him <laughs> Ernest. And that's about it. That's where I'm at. <laughs> I'm in Route 210 with Ernest. He's starting a bluegrass band. So, good nah. for him. <laughs> He's going places. That kid's going places. That kid's going places, let me tell you. All right. So, now that we're done with the Nuzlocke update, let's get into gaming news. Ooh, finally. <clears throat> and unfortunately, just like with current events, we got some ugly business to get out of the way in the world of gaming news this week. Oh, no. EA Gate. Can I just say I'm a little sick of people calling controversies X Gate? <laughs> It's right. stupid. Can we stop doing that, please? Not everything is Watergate, especially since nowadays nobody gets held accountable for everything. The defining right. feature of Watergate was that shit was leaked and then people were held accountable. That doesn't happen anymore. Right. So that's why everybody is in such a disconnected, shameful state right now. Anyways, moving on. EA employees were caught selling rare FIFA Ultimate team cards directly to individual players, sometimes for thousands of euros. That sounds unethical. A little bit. It also kind of speaks to the fact that a lot of them that work at EA know how these cards work. They know they're so addictive and rare. They know that people will pay top dollar for them, and they know that they change the way that the game is played. It's almost as if this microtransaction business is a bad thing. No. I don't know, man. I don't don't see the evidence. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Well, speaking of not seeing the evidence, recent article by Kotaku writer John Walker. Check this out. This is the title. Pokemon Go's eggs aren't loot boxes. They're fun presents. <laughs> now, you would think that he's quoting Niantic or some other kind of cynical games industry CEO or PR person, but no, that's Mr. Walker's opinion. He thinks that the eggs in Pokemon Go are getting a bad rap and they shouldn't be compared to loot boxes because they provide no meaningful advantage in the game. To which I say, they're a part of the game being withheld that you have to pay. That's literally what loot boxes are. They don't have to give you an advantage or not. That's not the point. <laughs> like right. They prey on people's addictive tendencies and natures. They string you along by constantly having something they can charge. Anyways, he goes on to like completely justify it, or try to at least, in the article. And mm. I'm not buying it. But people, we cannot ease up. Like Every time we give the game industry an inch they're going to take a mile so we need to call it what it is every single time i don't care like the same thing with marvel's avengers remember when they were like there isn't going to be any microtransactions yeah, psych. <laughs> and then they had all psych right and they're like well technically it's not because real microtransactions do this shut up shut up <laughs> i don't want to hear it so <laughs> they are what they are so uh, so that happened last thing bit of news that kind of bugs me so Blizzard Activision, CEO Bobby Kotick. You know him, you hate him, you love him if you're a terrible person, (laughs) but most of us don't like him. He recently hit the headlines for getting about $200 million in bonus. Now, he, I think he makes about $30 million a year. And a lot of CEOs will make low salaries, but they make their money in bonuses. His bonus was $200 million thanks to the strong stock performance during the pandemic. Nice. And what I would like to remind people is that Blizzard Activision, the same company that paid Bobby Kotick $200 million just now for stock performance, is also the same company that laid off 800 people in 2019 and has laid off hundreds more since then throughout time up to this point, including just a couple of days ago, another 200 people laid off for various studio shutdown reasons. Gotta keep those bonuses up, baby. Pretty much. (laughs) Now, 
there is some buzz in Washington about this, like it's getting some news because, I mean, a lot of CEOs do this, but the gaming industry seems to be especially egregious with this. Our Lord and Savior, Bernie Sanders, mm. is pushing, <laughs> he's, he's pushing for a tax on corporations where CEOs make more than 50 times the median worker, which I hate to say is unfortunately very common. Right. So the idea is if the CEO does make more than 50 times the median worker, they will be they will be taxed. Not a huge amount. I'm not really sure if the bill even goes far enough. But, of course, centrist Democrats and Republicans are already bucking up against it, being like they won't be able to hire as many people. And, you know, the, the, the wage gap actually is decreasing. And I'm just like, fuck you. Shut up. These people are being laid off and nobody gets treated in the working class worse it feels like than the gaming industry sometimes. Do you know yeah. that there has, I think they're in historic talks now for starting a union for game industry employees. There never oh, wow. has been a union in the game industry prior. It seems like it benefit a lot from that. Yeah. Yeah. They definitely need a union for sure. The thing is, if a company decides to hire less, they're going to produce less. And so if they really want to keep overpaying their CEOs, they certainly can, but that's not going to see them be highly productive. So I think this is a good way to pressure them to pay their employees more and treat them better. But we'll see how it goes. Something's got to give. Yeah. So anyways, moving off of all that game industry garbage and nonsense. It, it sucks. You know it sucks. Get out there and vote, people. Come on now. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we got some, some news on release dates and delays. Nocturne HD, Shin Megami Tensei 3, I think is what Nocturne is. Yep. That got a release date on May 25th. So it's coming okay. out pretty soon. That's right. great news for all of you Shin Megami Tensei fans, including me. I'm actually really excited about it. And you had a few things uh, in regards to Sony updates before we get into the Square Enix Presents, as well as, um, I believe, Gotham Knights. Yeah, Sony showed us a new look at the PSVR controller, VR2 okay. controller mm -hmm. for the PS5. And it looks very futury, man. Like, it basically, you put your hand inside of it and you grab the wand and it kind of fits around your hand like a circular thing and it just looks really futuristic it's pretty cool yeah i don't know also sony just bought controlling interest in the fighting game tournament evo mm -hmm. and evo is a big deal they have all of the biggest names in fighting games and players and now that sony has controlling interest it is worrying some players that they will be removing games such as smash brothers and other properties that don't belong to sony an Evo spokesperson came out and actually said that would not be the case and that we're going to be keeping all the games that we've been having on here. But mm -hmm. that remains to be seen. You know, that could just be a PR cover up. You never know. I'm not big on Evo, so I don't really have a stake in this fight, but I don't know how you feel. Like you, I'm not big on the fighting game tournament scene, but I know a lot of people that are. And I am concerned because Sony has proven in the past, at least recently, that it doesn't play well with others. Mm hmm. So if Microsoft bought Evo, I'd be a little bit less tense about it because I feel like they'd be okay with having other games that right. are on different platforms present. Especially since they work with Nintendo kind of yeah. closely. Yeah, but That's Sony, uh, time will tell. I mean, if they want to buy something that's successful and then remove what makes it successful, which is the diversity of games presented, that's on them. We'll see how it goes. Something right. else may rise to take its place. You know what I mean? Uh, tournaments go around and they come and they go. So we'll see. Right. Yeah, and uh, actually, speaking of Microsoft, Octopath Traveler is coming to Game Pass. Saw that, yeah. Yeah, so Very that's, cool. that, yeah, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's a Nintendo, straight up Nintendo property that. Yeah, they're... which had it's since been on PC. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it yeah, already yeah, had a yeah. PC release, but no, it's cool that it's coming to Games Pass, so Xbox owners get a chance to check it out, so. Yeah, it's awesome. A Sony Play at Home initiative that they uh, started, I believe, last month with Ratchet & Clank for free. On March 25th, they're going to be giving away 10 free games. Cool. So the games are Abzu, which is the underwater scuba diver game, yeah. Enter the Gungeon, Res Infinite, Subnautica, The Witness, which I've actually been very excited to play. I just didn't want to pay $40 for it. Yeah, they like gave it, it away out. for free on Xbox Live Gold, I think. Yeah, and I don't play my Xbox, so fair enough. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Astrobot Rescue Mission, which is a VR title. Moss, uh -huh. another VR title. Mm -hmm. Thumper and Paper Beast. And also starting April 19th, they will be giving away Horizon Zero Dawn for free as well. Cool. So that's a lot of good, cool free stuff. I'm going to be downloading at least four out of those 
10 games. Thumper is good if it's not on your list. You should check that out. Okay, yeah. Five out of those 10 games, then. It's like a <laughs> kind of surreal horror rhythm game. <laughs> mm. That's the only I can describe it. Wow. It's okay. kind of dope. Yeah, uh, I'm into it. And the last bit of news before we get into the Square Enix Presents is Gotham Knights was delayed to 2022. Mm. Which I'm not big mad over, but, you know, I, I was looking forward to playing it this year. But, you know, yeah, there's considering, so much out. And, yeah, I was going to say that considering the curveball, Outriders just threw me and all the other stuff. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I'm okay with that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right on. All right, well, let's get into it then. Square Enix presents Spring 2021. So I have everything kind of written out in a list here. We'll just go through them in order, and I'll get your thoughts, and we'll, we'll go from there. I know some things we're going to be more excited about than others. It was an okay conference. It wasn't anything yeah. mind-blowing, but it started off with Outriders. I've already said my thoughts. I mean, what do you think just by looking at it? I mean, it looks dope. I haven't played the demo yet. I downloaded it, and I was excited to play it. Now I'm even more so excited because of your thoughts on it, but yeah. I saw that there were alien monsters and stuff, which mm-hmm. I hadn't seen before in the trailers. I just mm-hmm. It kind of looked like it was just human-on-human action. Mm-hmm. Which is good, too. Yeah. Human on human, baby. Oh, baby. But now I get some beast thrown into the mix. Oh, human on beast action, baby. Ooh. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Get out of here. Uh, Oh, man. Well, when you get into the demo, hopefully soon, reach out to me once you're past the opener part where you can do co-op so we can play together, man. I'd really be interested to see how the co-op goes. Maybe we can talk about that next week. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, yeah, yeah. It, it looks dope, so yeah, cool, I can't wait cool. to try it. All right. All right, next we had a big much to do about Laura Croft. It was her, It's her 25th anniversary this year. And one of the things that they announced would be released was the Definitive Survivor Trilogy with all the DLC. That's all three of the Laura Croft, like the Tomb Raider reboot games. Mm-hmm. That seems kind of cool. I never really... Yeah. Never been a huge fan of Tomb Raider, even since the beginning. It wasn't one of those games I checked out on the PlayStation, but obviously I know about her. She's she's big in right. the, uh, the video game scene. I mean, what do you think about it? The first reboot I really loved. Oh, like, okay. it, it was it was so good. Yeah. The second one I got about halfway into and just lost interest, mm. and I haven't played the third one yet. So okay. I don't know if it's something I will go back to, just because it's kind of filled that uncharted role where. We got. I've played so many Uncharted games at this point where the reimagining of Tomb Raider just seems like a retread of that, just with a different story. So, uh, okay, fair enough. Which which Uncharted was a retread of Tomb Raider. So, right. You know. Eh. But Laura Croft as a protagonist is pretty dope. I got to give the reboots that they made her pretty badass. So. No, and this Defender Survivor trilogy looks really cool for fans. Like I'm not. I guess I'm not a huge fan, but I saw what they were putting together, and it looks neat. So. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. All right. And then we had some mobile bullshit. Yeah. I skipped <laughs> yeah. that port. I know. Just Cause, <laughs> Hitman, Space Invaders. And then they had some Taito announcements. There's a anime style puzzle bobble bust a move type game, I guess. Okay. Cool. I don't know. Darius Cosmic Revelation, which is a shmup for Switch and PS4. Eh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Bubble Bobble HD. Yeah. Uh, bubble Bobble 4. Bobble these I guess. bubbles, baby. Yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a, it's a classic. If you haven't played Taito games, I mean, get, go out there and get yourself an arcade collection of Taito games. Taito titles. It's good stuff. Yeah. And then they, they got into Marvel's Avengers and they showed a bunch of gameplay with uh, everybody's favorite Avenger, Hawkeye. Oh, yeah. Uh, they would have lost everything if not for Hawkeye. Yes. Hawkeye, oh man, let me tell you, so cool. So. Just a just a, a side a, a side to that. I yeah. wish that he would have kept his Ronin persona in Endgame, but you know, yes, you know, yeah, he just kind of gave that up. Yeah, I, I told you I was recently rewatching Infinity War and Endgame because of WandaVision. Mm-hmm. That part in Endgame. Skip ahead thirty seconds if you haven't seen Endgame because these are these are kind of spoilers. Where they're all like on the dock after the news that Natasha died, <laughs> and then Hawkeye's like, "You get your hammer and you go back there and you 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 find him." Right. <laughs> and I was just like, "This is bad." <laughs> right. It was it was really like hokey and and like bad and they, I think we were trying to put emotion into the scene, but it wasn't working for whatever reason. And uh, I wasn't digging his character in Endgame. Like uh, like you, I thought it was cooler when he was Ronin. But then after he came back, I, I was just like, this guy's lame. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, he always does cool shit with his bow. But yeah. other than that. 
Beyond a J- Jeremy Renner, man. I don't know. Anyways, yeah. so I thought it was weird, though. In the gameplay demo with Hawkeye on Marvel's Avengers, they're on a rooftop talking, but didn't it sound like they were all like in a small room, a la a mm-hmm. recording booth? They yeah. didn't have any like ambience or any effects to their voices to make them sound like they're outside. It was weird. Yeah. Hopefully that's just like an early game thing. I mean, not that I care. I'm not going to play it. And then they revealed <laughs> Black Panther. The Black Panther. Black Panther. I was stopping of course they had the, Of course they had the hip hop music playing behind it. And, yeah, well, you know, Black Panther. Right, because he's black. And I'm like, guys, I get it. But yeah. he's also African. So yeah. hip hop does. Uh, I mean. It, it did it with the movie, but it worked with the movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It felt less forced. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of started going off into a thing there. Yeah, but, I um, mean, I get it. Yeah, yeah, he looks really cool, though, man. Yeah. Like, he does look really cool. I just I hope wish he was that in a better they do something. Right. I hope they do something really cool with him. No, I mean, he's, who... he's going to have the same core moves as all the other characters. No. He's going to have his, his ranged attack. He's going to have his leap to the enemy attack. And he's going to have yeah. a regular attack. I mean, you have to imagine that they're change something up because they know that the reception on this game was not great okay but maybe <laughs> we'll see we we'll still see. haven't seen spider-man so it's like damn yeah yeah are we uh, ever gonna get spider-man in that I, I don't know it doesn't matter because we're not gonna play it anyway because there's a better spider-man game on the system that's right that's right maybe one day when they finish with all of the marvel content and the, t- the game is truly well and dead i'll pick it up for super cheap and play like the campaign but i I, even then, I'm not even sure if I'm actually going to yeah, Even then, I'm, time. I, I stopped playing the campaign. It's just like, oh, yeah. this is a slog. Yeah. These enemies mob you. I'm also, the Hulk, and I'm getting killed by regular human dudes. Like, Speaking of just... Marvel's Avengers, they announced they're actually going to make it harder to level up. Ooh, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, yeah. They said that pe- the problem is that people were leveling up too fast, and, and it was just distracting, and they weren't really sure. They weren't getting used to the skills they were buying before they got new skills. Wow. And it was it was hard for new players. Here's the funny part, though. The change to the leveling up to make it more grindy to level up doesn't happen until level 25. Mm. So apparently it's not for new players. Right. Apparently it's to take existing players and extend their play even longer to get more money. No money. More no money. problems. Yeah, they definitely have problems. Yeah. <laughs> the game sucks. <laughs> Anyways, and then they had a trailer for Balan Wonderworld, which looked like a cute little co-op. Yeah, I played the demo. I was not impressed. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's it doesn't fine. look like it's for me, too. It looks like it's aimed at a younger audience, so if you got your little nieces and nephews or kids that might be into like platforming and stuff, might be good for them. Eh. Yeah. And then they had a really long segment for Life is Strange, True Colors. Yeah. Life See is... your true colors shining <laughs> That's a they... Trolls reference. <laughs> uh, yes, that's what that's from. Trolls. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Life is Strange True Colors is new characters. I think there's like one character from the previous game in the series. But for the most part, it's all new characters. And the new power, instead of being able to rewind time, this character has the power of empathy. <laughs> I, I mean, it sounds lame when you say it, but the way that they... No, it's cool. Show, show it through it, gameplay. It looks really cool. Yeah, no, it's cool. So basically, you can see people's emotions, and you can even tap into them. And if you're not careful, the emotions can take you over. Mm-hmm. So there might be some kind of balance to like how you decide to really get in tune with somebody, so to mm-hmm. speak. And it helps her investigate some stuff that's going on. And I don't want to get too much into the story, but I mean... What I thought was really neat, especially for fans, if you get the ultimate edition of Life is Strange, which is coming out in September, I believe. Isn't that yeah. correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. You also get the remastered first two games in that set, which are going to be sold separately at a later date. But okay. they're, they, they said they're going to add new animations and everything, too, to the original games to kind of make them flow better and fit okay. with the, uh, the new style. Yeah, this game style, definitely looks much better than the original. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with the original. I thought it had an interesting art style, but it was very indie. You know, mm-hmm. there were it yeah. was very robotic a little bit in the animations, and yeah, so it's it's cool that they're updating that. So is it is it Life <laughs> is Strange one and two, or Life is Strange and Before the Storm? Yeah, well, no, yeah. it's just Definitely. Life is Strange and Life is Strange Before the Storm. They didn't include yeah, Life I, is Strange two for whatever reason. I yeah. think Vicky beat Before the Storm, and I was like, I'm not interested in this because it doesn't have any superpower stuff. <laughs> what was the literally? Gimmick, what was in the gimmick in Before the Storm? Oh, I don't think there was a game. You played as the friend from the first game. There's got to be something. Before before oh, all the shit wait. went down. Before then the Life storm. is Strange 2, I think, is getting remastered then because they talked about it. But I thought Before the Storm was the sequel. I mean, it's a prequel. Oh. 
I'm yeah. getting really confused. I don't know. And Life is Strange 2 is with the two uh, Latino brothers, and the yeah. younger one has telekinetic powers. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it looks like it's just Life is Strange and the prequel before the storm. Life is Strange 2 is not being remastered. That's too bad. Yeah. Oh, well. What are you going to do? Okay. Nothing. So, moving on. The last thing that they showed in the Presents was a game formerly titled Project Athia, which is a working title. They revealed the new title is going to be Forspoken. Mm. And starts off with the voice actor for the main character. And she, it's funny, she opens up. She's like, is that a motherfucking dragon? Right. <laughs> and I was like, this doesn't fit. I'm sorry, it didn't fit. Yeah. Well, it was cool, though, because I, I feel like, I don't know if it's kind of like Outriders and the fact that you're grounded in the real world, something post-apocalyptic happens, and then you're in a fantasy world. I, I didn't really I, get a whole lot of story out of it, but I thought once they cut to gameplay, it looked awesome. Oh, it looks great. I think she's flung into a fantasy world or something. Yeah, probably. that must be it. Never-ending story. You know that song from Stranger Things? Shut up. <laughs> Shut your Zoomer ass up. <laughs> But yeah, this game, man, for spoken is black girl magic, man. I love it. Yeah. I love the literally. Design of the pr- yeah, literally. She's a young black woman. She's got a really cool design. Like her traversal is neat. She's like flipping all over the place. It looks like one of those epic you versus like an uh, an into the wild type thing where you're yeah. fighting all kinds of monsters and, and enemies and and uh, the combat and everything looks. It's totally up my alley. It's like yeah, it's like that Ghost of Tsushima style single person adventure. I'm into it. Yeah, so. it's going to be a definite buy. Probably. One to watch. All right, mm-hmm. and that is gaming news. Woo! We getting into yeah. it. We getting into it. So, speaking of getting into it, this week, Derek, I just got to know, what you feeling? I am feeling the Harley Quinn series on HBO Max. I know you get into them, man. The DC oh shows. God. Yeah, I've been watching I've been watching Static Shock, Justice mm-hmm. League, mm-hmm. Snyder Cut, but Harley Quinn is literally the thing that I keep going back to. Uh, me and Vicky are actually watching it together. It is hilarious. Really? Yes. Cool. Like it's it's so fucking funny. I so here's the here's the main premise. You're following Harley Quinn after her breakup with the Joker, and it's about her trying to navigate life without him and trying to figure out how to live without being in this abusive relationship. But she mm. still keeps trying to you know kind of go back and dip her toe in it like oh well maybe he's changed oh, you know stuff like that it's it really shows some real life relationship stuff and like she's like best friends with poison ivy and then they mm. eventually get more people in the crew and stuff and there's just really unique and funny takes on dc villains that i love i mean, absolutely love it. especially clayface and king shark it sounds a little like meta i'm into it's it. very yeah, it's very meta man cool. like king shark is like instead of this giant murdering shark while he still does some murder, yeah. <laughs> he's like a tech savvy hacker type dude, but he's okay. also a giant shark. And Clayface, they really lean into the fact that he's an actor mm. and he's just always talking about <laughs> roles that he's going out for and stuff. It's just really, <laughs> it's just really, it's really fun. And he's always speaking like this. I'm going to be acting as a mailman and doing this and it will be my greatest role yet. And it's just, it's hilarious, man. I cannot say anything bad about this show right now cool so yeah. all right on hbo max harley quinn there's two seasons i'm on episode nine of 13 in season one and mm-hmm. yeah i can't wait to get through it I, this, this might be one that i actually go back and rewatch. wow just as something to put on like well, it's i'm sold I'm, I'm definitely gonna check it out now thanks for the yeah. recommend mm-hmm. what pray tell have you been feeling well, not a whole lot of new stuff, to be honest. I had to reach in my, my YouTube bag of trips this week because mm. I haven't been doing a whole lot of new things. I can't wait till this pandemic is over so we can go out and live our lives again. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I thought I would recommend a channel that's you know moderately popular. Like I, I recently recommended uh, Video Game Donkey on the Call It Like I Don't See It podcast. Okay. I want a lot of their listeners to check them out. But I know you haven't heard of this guy, and he's pretty popular. He's got over 2 million subscribers as well. A video game YouTuber by the name of Alpha Rad. Okay. And it's spelled like Alpha Omega, Alpha R A D. Okay. All one word. And he's mainly known for Smash Brothers content. He's he's a really, really good Smash Brothers player. But he does a lot of other stuff too. 
And he streams and then cuts together his streams with editing and a lot of jokes. He's really decent at it. And he puts out content pretty regularly. Like I'd say it's almost as funny or sometimes just as funny as Video Game Donkey's content, but it comes out more often. Oh, okay. Which is kind of cool. Yeah, no, he's like, he's really decent. Like, I'm into it. So I, I would definitely subscribe to him and check him out if you if you like uh, funny now. video game YouTubers at all. And check out some of his more popular stuff. Um, he's done super cuts of his run-throughs of, like, Pokemon Sword and Shield. He's done some collaborative stuff with Jaden Animations, which is another great YouTube channel. And he did a World of Light Nuzlocke, which is the story mode in Smash Brothers Ultimate, where he had to go through the World of Light. As soon as a character gets KO'd, he can no longer use them. So he had, Damn. <laughs> yeah, he had only so many characters he could use throughout the you know, the game, depending on if they got KO'd or not. And it took him a couple of attempts. Like you can actually chronicle through his first attempt and how he got immediately bodied and how he gets further and further each time and how he learned and all that. It's pretty neat. You know, you know it's funny. I just went to his page and he's live now doing his first Pokemon Nuzlocke. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like his stuff is pretty good. He's pretty funny. So I'll definitely check him out. And that is what I am feeling this week. All right. Sounds good, man. I'm check him out. Speaking of checking things out, I have to check myself out here. I'm starting to glow. Oh I shit. Got, got this power level rising inside of me. It's you like need I to go to the doctor. Oh, I I, I I think I need to be asking you for a challenge. Oh it's like me! For the Derek X Mike Anime Challenge! Woo! Hell Believe yeah. it! This <laughs> week, we are talking about Berserk Episode 20 and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood Episodes 57 and 58. We get into the end game, folks. Woo! We're in the end game now. That's right, that's right. I don't think it was that hype this week, but I'll ask anyways. <laughs> Derek, this week, <laughs> Berserk, was it hype? No. <laughs> Hell no, nah, it wasn't hype. <laughs> it but, was some dude. <laughs> yeah, it was hella some dude. <laughs> I'm telling you. So we uh, start out with... some heavy shit happened in episode 19, you know? Right, yeah. And we literally, like, skip. There's a time skip mm -hmm. from that. And I'm just like, whoa, wait, what happened to Griffith? What's going on? Exactly. But uh, basically what's happening when we first see Guts, well, actually, we don't see Guts. We see, like, sort of a battle festival going on. Hmm. And there's about to be a final round between two knights, and Guts just kind of walks in. And it's like, mind if I step in? And then the, uh, he fights the guy. Not really a fight, because he completely breaks his sword. And yeah. then he Guts is a badass. Yeah, and then he submits, and he just walks away smiling. I'm like, Guts, why do you feel so good about that just now? <laughs> we know who you are. You know who you are. He just walks away, and he walks back to this uh, little house in the mountains, and this little girl named Erica is screaming, Guts, oh my goodness, you're back. Oh, I was scared you weren't coming back. And I was like, who is this little girl? Mm. And she's like, my grandpa Godo said that you were going to come back, and I didn't believe it, but you did, and you're here, so yay. And her grandpa is like this old blacksmith that's been working in the mountains. Speaking of which, you see him in the first episode. He's the guy when Guts is leaving after getting a sword repair, like, you leaving? Don't get yourself killed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. yeah. Just so you know, it's a guy that he knows from later so, on. I'm assuming he makes his badass sword. That the he Dragon has the Slayer? Yeah, yeah. He eventually makes the Dragon oh, Slayer. Oh, yeah. So, heads up there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So Guts has apparently been hanging out, living here for about a year. Mm -hmm. And we see him doing a few training montages of him standing underneath the waterfall and Erica's releasing these tree logs that someone has <laughs> sharpened up both sides of. Oh my and God. And we're just like, who, why do y'all have all this time on your hands? Because I'm like, is Gus doing this himself or is he making Erica do it? <laughs> right. Hey, I need you to sharpen all right, these Right, I need you to sharpen these into shivs, giant shivs for me, <laughs> so please. So I can stab myself. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so <laughs> she cuts a rope, releases them, they fall down the waterfall, and then he cuts two of them, and then, oh no, like seven of them come down at the same time, there's too much for them. Yeah. And we think he's dead, but he's not, of course no, not. Of course he not. comes back yeah. up, she's like, oh, thank God, guts, I can't believe it. Then we do a scene again with the waterfall. And two more logs fall, mm -hmm. and he cuts those two. And then Erica looks at him like, "You did it!" And I was like, "But he just did that, though." Yeah, <laughs> he literally just did that, and it was way more impressive the first time. But whatever, we're gonna keep it moving. Uh, one thing I will say about this episode before I move on: the animation on Guts was all over the place this episode. Yeah, 
Like he normally guts looks really fucking cool, but he was looking real derpy. A lot, mm. <laughs> a lot of these scenes, you yeah. you have to go back and watch it. Like sometimes he has the real pointing ears, you know. Yeah. And sometimes he just has regular ears, and his face is usually really like grizzled and mean looking, and then it has more definition. And sometimes it's just, just straight up flat. But anyway, interesting. Uh, yeah, I don't recall yeah. that, but it's been a while. So yeah, and so then. We've got a guy on a horse calling for Master Goto. He's like, Master Goto, I need you to make like a hundred swords really quick. As many as you can, man. I need these swords. There's this band of bandits that are hiding in the mountains, just over the mountains. And we need these swords so we can go and get them and get this cash money, baby. Cash and Guts, money. <laughs> he's like, I, I forget what their name is. They're like the brigade, the band. The ah, band of the hawk and guts grabs him. Sorry, he's sure, like, he's like, fuck. "What did you say? The <laughs> yeah. fuck did you just say?" And I was like, yeah. "You heard him, guts." Jesus, <laughs> like, yeah. he's like the band of the hawk. Yeah, but to guts, <laughs> that's unbelievable because they're an official army of Midland. They're not a bandit camp hanging out in the mountains, you know. Right. And so then we move over to the remnants of the band of the hawk because apparently there's been some deserters since Griffith was captured and they've been on the run. Mm. You got Casca is leading them as the commander. Who else is there? Uh, uh, I, every Cor- pretty much Corcus, everybody. Corcus, Pippin, Pippin, Judo, Judo. I love Judo. His name Ricket. Ricket. Yeah, and so they're all tired. They've been on the run, and Corcus is. It's like we. It's pretty much over, guys. We might as well give up. And Ricket's like. Why are you even still here then, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, if you're about this life, then fuck off. Right. I'm a fucking <laughs> kid and I'm about this. Like, yeah. He said, why didn't you just leave with the other deserters? And then it just does a panning shot of everyone that's still left. They're all beaten, battered, bruised. Oh, man. And then, Sounds like they had a bad year. Oh, yeah. And Casca is trying to, you know, eat her little porridge or whatever she's got. And she basically falls asleep because she's fucking tired, man. Yeah. She doesn't know what to do. And she thinks that she knows exactly where Griffith's being kept. They're saying that there have been some inhuman moans coming from deep in the castle. Yikes. And they're going to try and mount a rescue mission. Mm-hmm. But they don't know if he's alive or not. They're just going, you know, based on faith. And then we get a band of soldiers coming through. And starts killing off the band of the hawk. Like, mm. they're shooting flaming arrows and everything. And Casca, uh, she grabs a sword and she starts slashing away. And she's she's killing it, you know? Yeah. But then, of course, she trips over something. And a guy ends up on top of her, as such is the life of Casca. Yeah. And he's about to stab her. And then he gets kicked from behind. I'm like, hell yeah, that's my boy. I know it is. And it pans up and it's guts, baby. And, he, and what does he say to her? He says, get up and fight. What are yeah. we doing here? Yeah. And... That's pretty much where the episode ends off. So Guts went back to rescue his people. And he he got really introspective this episode. I skipped over that. He was just thinking about what he's meant to do. And he kind of just comes to the realization that maybe it's just, I'm just supposed to fight for myself, you know? Yeah. And I will never swing my sword for another man again. Yeah. As far as, like, working under someone else. Yeah. And he asked Godo. to fight for his own causes. Yeah. And he asked Godo what why he became a backsmith and he's like i don't know i just did it the sparks yeah the sparks they it's like little pieces of life sparking in front of my eyes i was like oh jesus that's kind of sad bro snuff out right i give life and it immediately goes again and it comes back (laughs) yeah and then guts is like wow that must be what the my sword clashing with others is for me the sparks it creates from clashing in battle uh introspect yeah so <laughs> so yeah well the episode ends off with guts kind of stepping in to save the day and i'm assuming afterwards they're going to figure out a plan to get griffith out and things mm-hmm. probably aren't gonna go too well but i guess we will see and that's the episode yeah yeah guts is still trying to figure out what he wants to do with his life a year later so he's training having a little girl shoot logs at him right you know it's Paying the bills? I don't know. Right. <laughs> maybe maybe he goes to those festivals and wins prizes to pay the bills. Who knows? I mean, but. does he really have to? He's living off the land. They're living off the land, it looks like. So Yeah, yeah. And I mean, the blacksmith probably makes a fair amount of money. People coming through. He's famous. They know he makes weapons. So Right. Cool. Well, yeah, I, I think the next episode is going to be pretty hype in the fact that you're going to see a lot of crazy stuff a lot of movement a lot of plot twists so i'm interested to hear what you have to say about that but let's get on to my episodes this week so 
Oh, yeah. We start? Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, episode 57, Eternal Leave. Last we left off, Greed and Fu were both facing down against Bradley. But during the fight, Bradley tussles with Greed and uses one of his daggers to pin Greed down. And mm-hmm. while he's pinned down and Bradley faces Fu alone, he slices Fu in the forehead and stabs him. And, like, pretty much, like, Fu is... He's on his heels. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. he, he's probably going to bleed out. And Fu makes a decision to launch a suicide attack, basically. He's got, like, dynamite around his stomach. He lights Badass. the fuses and rushes at Bradley. Bradley, though, sees it. Again, he's got his eye. He's quick. He knows what's up. With a single sword slash, he slices the top of all the dynamites and Fu's stomach, defuses the bombs, and kills Fu all in one blow. Yeah. But while he's distracted doing that, Buccaneer comes too, takes the sword inside of his chest, thrusts it through Fu into Bradley, using Fu as like a human shield so Bradley couldn't see him coming. Yeah. Saying like, hey man, I know you feel like you failed just now, but I'm going to make sure that your sacrifice isn't in vain. I'm going to hell with you and we're taking this bastard with us, you know? Yeah, I was so like, That's badass. Dope. Yeah. yeah. And that gives... Ling or greed because Ling basically takes over greed when he sees that Fu gets killed. He's like, ah, Fu! <laughs> Ling leaps forward and stabs Bradley right in his alchemical eye. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do they call that? His, his ultimate uh, eye. His ultimate eye. That's right. So kind of taking away that advantage that he has. Lan Fon arrives just soon enough to witness her grandfather's death. She's not a big fan of it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Then they shoot to the underground, where Edward's group encounters the gold tooth doctor who created Bradley all those mm-hmm. years ago, and he's sitting in a little alchemical s- circle. And I'm like, burn him immediately. Right. Mustang. Excuse me, sir. Burn that. Burn him. Burn it now. <laughs> as soon as he revealed himself to be evil, I'm the one who created Bradley. Before he even finishes Burnt. that sentence, you did it with envy. Do it now. He doesn't. Right. Of course not. And they're all just like, oh, who are you? He basically has enough time to summon all of the Fuhrer candidates, the ones that were rejected, but were still highly trained. And they all just proceed to fight these men with swords. And again, Hawkeye can't shoot any of them for whatever reason. Mustang can't burn any of them for whatever reason. Scar can't seem to catch one with his alchemical arm so he can easily defeat them. All well, of them gotta, just get. You gotta think, man. These guys are were trained just as well as the Fuhrer. Nope. The Fuhrer is already like nasty. Nope. 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 You're none not of taking them, that. Nope. None of them are homunculi. They're just ordinary dudes that have been oh. hanging out and not fighting anyone, by the way, this whole time. And all of a sudden, they can take out like our strongest heroes. Well, I'm and thinking they're faster than all of them. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking they're a bit augmented because if you remember the people that went through the bonding process all died, died right yeah. so they have to be like augmented have some sort of something going on there's something going on they don't explain it but you know i'll give it to you on that yeah no because because <laughs> of a plot contrivance all of our characters have been depowered long yes. enough for the doctor who created bradley to activate a transmutation circle that's connected to the five research labs and basically enacts the sacrifice plan the whole thing we've been talking about where Edward, Alphonse, and Izumi are sacrifices because they've seen the Eye of Truth. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, the Eye of Truth opens up around them and takes them into it, completely absorbs their entire bodies. Edward, Alphonse, Izumi, gone. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So that was pretty heavy. Yeah. And that ends that episode. Then we get to episode 58, Sacrifices. During the fight between Ling and Bradley on the battlements, Bradley falls into the moat below and he's hanging on to Ling and Ling's hanging on to like the top of the battlement and Lan Fon like rushes up to try to save Ling and then the rest of the central sol- soldiers and then they shoot Bradley and he falls down into the actual moat. So for all intents and purposes, for now, he's defeated. Obviously, he's probably not dead. Yeah. And, he did uh, take that L though. Yeah, he, he to took that L. That. <laughs> Ling is pretty distraught at his inability to save Fu and you know he's like what is the good of immortality if I can't save my subjects and Buccaneer is pretty much lying there bleeding out and he makes a final request to Ling to use his powers to defend the front gate Ling's like hey man at least I can do that so he draws upon the full power of Greed's ultimate shield heads down to central forces that are rushing the gate and the battlement itself 
and just proceeds to annihilate them. He gets hit mm-hmm. by a car. Doesn't really do much to him. He's just going for it. Yeah. They shoot back underground where you can see Edward and Azumi along with Alphonse, although he seems to be unconscious. They all appear in the underground near where Father's lair is. And they find Father in his n- new weird flasky form. And yeah. Hohenheim is just kind of sticking out of him, like one of his legs and his head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it looks really weird. <laughs> like he's halfway absorbing him. Right. The homunculus basically says, you know, I got four of the five human sacrifices I need. I've got Hohenheim, Alphonse, Edward, and Izumi. I just need the fifth. Hohenheim starts to explain, like, oh, I destroyed his flask but he's still able to ex- and then you know father's like shut up and absorbs right. him the rest of the way his body get back in my belly get in my belly you're talking too much you shoot over to the gold tooth doctor and the levels above basically all the fewer candidates captures all of them because again they're plot wise they're depowered they couldn't mm-hmm. defeat them i guess whatever of course and they slit hawkeye's throat in oh, order man. to get mustang to perform human transmutation because that's the only way he'll see the truth and become the fifth candidate for sacrifice. Yeah. So they're like pressuring him to do it. And of course, Hawkeye's like bleeding out, like don't do it. Mustang's like, damn it. (laughs) So I'm thinking he's probably going to do it and he probably will become the fifth sacrifice. And then they'll uh, transmute and bring him down where the rest of the crew is. I don't know how that's all going to turn out. It's not looking great for our heroes right now, but that's where, that's where we're at. So yeah. moving forward, it's one to one. Each of us are going okay. to do one episode every week because we're finally lined up and we're in the end game now. We're only a few weeks out from finishing this series. So awesome. Exciting times. Cool, cool, cool. Great. And with that, that is the end of this exceedingly long episode. Woo! Yeah. All Editing right. is going to be fun for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a labor of love, baby. I'm excited to do it. And I'm excited that everybody came out to listen to us this week. We appreciate your support. If you want to support us more, there are places you can find us. For instance, if the folks out there are interested in what you have for sale or just want to reach out to you and check you out, where can they find you? Where can they follow you? Where can they buy from you? Yeah, just so you know, we didn't really touch on this episode. If you're a new listener, I am a eBay online reseller. I sell toys and video games and nerd memorabilia. Uh, you can check out my eBay store at ebay.com slash str slash gamer goodies and more. I'm on Instagram at gamer goodies more. And Twitter at goodies underscore more. Excellent. As far as the podcast goes, you can find us on Facebook if you're on there. Facebook.com slash player two is enter the pod. We also have all our episodes and clips that we make uploaded to YouTube. And that's a YouTube channel. Player two has entered the podcast. And of course, we upload to our hub at anchor.fm slash player two is enter the pod every single Sunday. So you can subscribe there or listen wherever podcasts are played. You can find us on Breaker, Google Podcast, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. If you have any questions or would like to reach out about the show, comments, suggestions, anything, any kind of feedback, feel free to email us. You can reach out to us at mcpaperstacks at gmail.com or contact us through YouTube or Facebook, whatever you prefer. And if you want to follow me personally, I'm on Twitter at MikePetersonAL. And I also do live gaming on Twitch, twitch.tv slash mcpaperstacks. My schedule is up on the channel, but basically you can find me usually Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday nights. And I archive all of my streams on a YouTube channel called MC Paper Stacks Plays. And I'd love to see you come out, hang out for a bit. That is our show. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. See you later. All right. We will see you next week. Bye-bye. Peace.